we can take a prairie vole that should be monogamous, and if we block those receptors in that part of the brain that's involved in addiction, the animal doesn't bond. Or we can take a species that normally should never bond and take the gene for the receptor, put it in a virus, and put it into the brain area, that reward brain area of the non-monogamous species, and suddenly they are able to form bonds. We draw these little uh, squares. Um, we say if they're in this box together, they are probably, uh, like here you can see these two guys are interacting. So this is the receptor on radiography and uh, prairie bowls. You can see the difference. Oh, it's probing for not. So this is a prairie vole brain that we're going to be able to slice very thin, uh, looking at these brain areas that we know are involved in pair bonding, and um, actually see which neurons were activated uh, during the pair bond process. Our drive and seeing if that's a possibility because of this data, and it's not fitting on flash drives. How big? You mean the? Um, yes. Yeah, so how much? Oh, she's going to go get that one and bring them all to the, to the nest. So there, she just collected them all. How much time the two individuals spend in contact, these two individuals are, are close together, um, over a three hour period. So we have here a family of periwolves. These pups are about a week old. And you can see that as the mother walks around, the pups are actually attached to the, to the mother. They, they have a, a milk tooth that they use to actually attach. She can get them off if she needs to. All of the stuff I was doing over there in Sweden was influenced by the work done by, by Larry and his, his co-workers. So the genes that he's been able to identify in voles that have a huge influence on, on pair bonding behavior, we investigated in humans to see if, if variation in those genes influence people's propensity to, to engage in pair bonded relationships, basically. So the, the, the same brain systems that are involved in pair bonding uh, are also involved in addiction and the same chemicals. So uh, amphetamine, for example, releases dopamine into the nucleus accumbens. And uh, there have been studies in voles that show that pair bonded voles will take less amphetamine. So these two systems are competing. What bonding is, is the, con is the brains connecting together pleasure with the individual that they're with when they're having the pleasure. So if you do things fun and exciting and exhilarating with your partner, your brain helps to make that connection stronger.